Hi, I'm uh, Niklas from Bitsquid, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can extend the flow using Lua. So how you can create your own flow nodes using Lua that can then be used by your level designers and the artists when they set up their levels and their objects. So I'm not sure if you remember this, this is an example from a previous tutorial where we created a flow script for a level uh, to make these two uh, units jump. So when we run this level here, uh, uh, we, get, we have this behavior where these units jump around. Now I'm going to remove this, this jumping behavior uh, from the flow script here and so that we can add, uh, add our own stuff. So let's get rid of this. So now we're ready to start defining our own flow nodes. So if we go into the project data, there is a file in the root uh, project folder called global.scriptflow-nodes. Uh, this file defines all the uh, all the scripted flow nodes in the game, that is, all the flow nodes that have been created in Lua. Uh, so to add a new flow node and make it available to the level designers, we just have to create an additional entry here. As you can see, this file is in our simplified JSON format, this uh, superset of regular JSON. So when I define the flow node here, I did it by copying an existing one, I get to pick a name for it, so I'll call it something like tutorial test. Uh, I get to pick which Lua function to call, so let's call a Lua, Lua function called so callback tutorial test. And I get to define the arguments that this function should take. Uh, let's make sure that it takes uh, two arguments. And this final option here, visibility, that controls um, if this function should be visible just in the level editor, just in the unit editor, or in both. I'm fine with having it visible in both, so I'll remove this visibility variable. I'll save this and go back to the level editor. I now have here, uh, I'm now picking the level editor to get these uh, newly created flow nodes into the game. I pick reload all resources. Uh, now it's re has reloaded the flow data. And if I now go into the level flow here, and I right click to spawn a new flow node, I have a menu here called script, and from this script, menu I can pick a node called uh, tutorial test. If I get this node, you see that that is expected it has uh, two uh, unit nodes as input. Uh, it also has an in event trigger that determines when this node should be triggered and an output event trigger. So I'll hook up the input event to this level loaded. I insert a small delay here just to make it clearer when this is happening. I also want to hook it up to these two, two units here, so I'll need to bring them into flow. I will right click here, select create unit flow now. And this one, and I'll do the same, same thing for this node here. Create unit flow now. And I'll hook them up. So now I'm ready to run and save this and uh, let's bring in the console here and press F5 to test this in the game. And if I go back to the console here, you see that after two seconds has passed, I actually get an error message. So I get the error method not found flow callback tutorial test. And that is because I, I never actually defined this Lua function. I just said that it should call a Lua function called flow callback tutorial test. But since that function hasn't been defined in Lua, I get this error. 
so let's fix that by defining that little function. So let's define this uh, function that I just named. Um, I'll actually do a global search here for uh, for one of these, just so that I can put this function in the same file as all the other ones. Here we go. So I'll add a new one here, call function. What did I call it? We'll call that tutorial test. Um, now these uh, callback functions from Flow, they always take a single table as parameter. And all these um, uh, arguments that we specify here will arrive in this function, uh, will arrive as fields in that table. So in this table I will actually have fields called... Uh, uh, I will have a field called unit1. So I can set, uh, set up some local variables, fill them with values from this table. And now I want to do something something a little bit interesting with these. Uh, so let's um, let's find out the direction between these two. So I'll take the world position. Of one uh, on the first object in that one, and I'll subtract world position in the other one. Uh, so I get the direction. Uh, let's uh, normalize that as well. Um, I have a normalized directions between these two objects. And um, let's pull out the uh, actors from these objects. The actors are the uh, physical physical objects. So I pull out the two actors here. Uh, I'm sure I think it's zero. And then I'll give them a push. So I'll push, take the first actor here, give it a push. Um, I actually have to look up the push function here in the documentation. Do you remember what it looks like? Yeah, it takes an actor, velocity, and mass. It's perfect. So I'll push this one. I'll use this uh, direction times. Uh, 10 to give it a little more velocity and a mass of 100 kilograms. And I push, uh, let's see, this is the direction from U1 to U2, so that's right. I push uh, the other one here in the uh, negative direction. Or the same. So uh, the result of this, if I'm correct, should be that I uh, push the two units together and give them a push towards each other. Let's save that, and I'll go back into the level editor. I'll use this quick reload to reload everything. Oh, I actually made a mistake here. 9300. Um, I'll type and talk at the same time. I'll go back into the level editor, reload the sources. And now I can test this. I press F5. Into the game, and after two seconds, boom, they get this push that brings them together. So, let's look at the flow again. So, the nice thing, what's really nice about this is that you can, using Lua, you can define whatever game specific behaviors you're interested in. It might be stuff that only makes sense in your particular game, stuff for picking up objects, for spawning certain kinds of effects, and so on. And then you can and create flow nodes that, that does that stuff, which means that suddenly all that behavior, all that game specific behavior suddenly becomes available to your level designers and makes it possible for use for them to use that behavior in an easy way and connect it to connect it up to other things in flow. 
So this, this allows you to uh, create a nice level of cooperation between your gameplay programmers and your level designers. Um, that's for all for this tutorial, so thank you.